Welcome to another Bean Outdoor Words of Matthias. This month I'm going to take a look at Joshua 9 and, and talk a little bit about that passage of Scripture and, and some lessons that we can learn from God's Word. Um, in, in Joshua chapter 9, um, just to kind of set the frame for you, you know, Joshua was chosen to lead the Israelites after Moses had died. And after Moses died, he led them and they defeated Jericho. And they went, marched around the walls of the city, and Jericho had those great walls. And um, after after those walls fell, if you remember, Achan uh, took the accursed thing. And when they went to to fight the Ai um, in that kingdom, that they, they were defeated. Then they found out that Achan had stole, and they cleansed themselves of, uh, uh, of the sin that he had done. And after that point, uh, they went back and defeated Ai. And that's where this pa passage starts, where people have heard about what has happened and um, and we're going to see what what happens. He says, And it came to pass when all the kings which were on this side of Jordan and the hills and in the valleys and in all the coast of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite and the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, the Jebusite, heard thereof. And they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and Ai, they did work wily, and went and made as if they had been ambassadors, and took old sacks upon their, upon their asses, and wine, wine bottles, old and rent, and bound up, and old shoes, and clouded upon them their feet, and old garments upon them. And all the bread their provision was dry molded. And they went to Joshua unto the camp at Gilgal, and said, said unto him, and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Peradventure ye dwell among us. And how shall we make a league with you? And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are ye, and from whence come ye? And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come, because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard the fame of him, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sion king of Heshbon, and to Og king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say to them, We are our, your servants. Therefore now make ye a league with us. This our bread we took for our provision out of the houses on that day we came forth to go unto you, but now behold it is dry and moldy. And these bottles of wine which we were filled were new, and behold they be rent. And these our garments and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. And the men took of their victuals. And I'm going to read some more there. But I've read down to uh, verse 15, 14. And uh, so basically what happened was these Gibeonites got scared. And they were seeing what was happening to these other, to Jericho and Ai. And they got scared. And they said, you know, we've we got to figure out something. We'll, we'll join up with, with Joshua and, and that army. But they said, well, Joshua's not going to join up with us because we're not Israelites. And, and we're not part of that um, that group of people. And 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 that's not going to happen. And so he said, here's what we'll do. We'll take our donkeys and we'll dirty them up and make them look like they've been riding a long ways. We'll uh, take our wine bottles and, and, and make them look rough and, and, and old like we've been traveling a long ways and beat up. We'll tear our clothes up and just get all nasty. And we'll take our bread. We'll leave our bread sitting out for a few days and let it get moldy and dry and stuff like that. And we'll go up to them. And that's what they did. They showed up at, 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 in the camp and they said, uh, we want to make a league with you and join up with you. And, jo and then Joshua would say, well, where are you from? And, and, and he said, well, we come from a long ways. When we started off, our wine bottles were brand new. When we started off, our bread was brand new. We, and and every, we was in great shape. But we've been traveling so far and so long that this is what's become of, of, of our stuff. We've just been traveling so far. It's basically like if you take a brand new van uh, or a car or, or anything you buy a brand new off the lot and you drive it back and forth from to california once a week for six months it's going to get some wear and tear on that thing you're driving three three five six thousand miles a week on that thing um it, it's just going to get wore out and that, that they were trying to give that deception as if they were even though they weren't they they just traveled uh, a few miles maybe 10 miles but they were trying to give that impression that they've been traveling for a very long time and so uh, so they're trying to convince Joshua. And they said, look at our wine bottles. Look at our donkeys. Look at our, our bread. And it says that the men took of their victuals. And it says this, and ask not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. 
The Bible says they didn't ask counsel. They didn't ask God what he thought. They didn't try to get his direction. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. There's been a bunch of times in my life, and sadly to admit, that I seeked not counsel from the Lord. Whether it was something... Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. Whether it was something personal, whether uh, it was something big or something at church or whatever, there's been times I didn't see the Lord on what direction I should follow. And man, I got myself in a mess trying to lean into my own understanding. And you, Joshua and these guys, if they, if they would have prayed and asked God and said, God, do you, what do you think we should do? Should we make a league with these guys? And I told my class this when I preached this a few weeks ago. I said, Well, what do you, what do you think God would have said? God would have gave him direction. He would have said, uh, these guys are imposters. You know, because God knows everything. We can't hide anything from him. And he would have said, these guys are imposters. You can't do anything with these guys. That they, they don't believe like you do. They don't worship like you do. Send them away. Or, or he would have gave them some direction. But they didn't do that. They just took, done the eye test. Said, well, everything looks okay. They're, everything matches up. I mean, they said they've been traveling a long ways. Got this old bread. They got this old wine. They got these old donkeys. They got old clothes. They're dirty. It, it looks like a duck. It's, it, it flies like a duck. It must be one. And, and But they never asked God what he thought. Let's keep reading. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swore unto them. And it came to pass at the end of three days after they had made a league with them that they heard that they were their neighbors and that they dwelt among them. And the children of Israel journeyed and came into their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon and Cherub and Baroth and Kirijah. Jerem, and the children of Israel smote them not, because the princes of the congregation had sworn at them by the Lord God of Israel, and all the congregation murmured against the princesses. And, and if you keep reading, um, and, and I can tell you what happens at the end of that story, basically what happens is they came to these towns, and because they had made a league with these guys, they couldn't defeat those. And because they, did, they made that league, then they, they couldn't defeat them because they had promised, their, promised protection. And ending up, if you, if in the last verse, it talks about that Joshua ended up making those guys, uh, because they had lied to him, he ended up making them uh, hewers of wood, it says, and drawers of water for the congregation. He, he made them almost like slaves and made them work around there. But, but I said all that to, to say this, is that those guys had a pretty good deception going they were fake from the get-go, but they had a good deception going. And, and, and I told my kids this. Number one, do we have a deception going? Or we, ask yourself, has there ever, ever been a time and a place that I accepted the Lord as my personal Savior? Has there ever been a time that I asked, and that I realized that I was a sinner and asked Jesus to save me? If there was that time, that's great. But so many times, I think, in, in churches and in Christian schools and that or people that grow up in a Christian home that they, they have a, a deception going just like these guys did. You know, these guys weren't from a far, far away country. They were just from around the corner. They, 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 they had money. They had things. But they gave the appearance that they had been traveling a long ways, that they were wore out, that they needed help, and they played on their emotions. And I believe there's a bunch of people that go to church every Sunday and look like Christians. They'll dress like one. They may act like one, but they're really not. And, and some of that comes out where people may act like a Christian on Sunday, but not during the week. Or maybe that they have a deception going all the time. And other people are fooled thinking that they're saved. And that's great if you want to fool other people and, and that's your goal. But the fact is, the Bible says, as a point in the man wants to die and after that's judgment, one day we're going to give account. And when we give an account to God, there's only one, we can only plead what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Otherwise, we're going to pay for our sins and go to hell. And so we need to ask ourselves, has there ever been a time and a place that I accepted Christ as my personal Savior? That's the most important thing. And the second thing is, um, that is, do we just run deceptions in general? Okay, let's say, I know I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven. That's great. And that's the most important thing. 
But am I a liar or am I a deceiver? Okay, uh, a few, a, some time ago, um, I was teaching a class and um, we was there at school and a young man, uh, we finished a test or a quiz and after we got done, um, they were kind of just mingling and having like a study hall because everybody was done. I was grading papers. And this boy came up to me and he said, look what he drew on my paper and he handed me this piece of paper. And it said, and it had a picture on it that that, that the boy who handed it to me had drew. And it, and, and, and it captioned around it, it said, this is what low lowlifes do when they don't have enough time on their hands. And, it, and then at the bottom it said, you're a, and it had a, a pretty ugly word on there. And I read that and I said, who wrote that? Who wrote this? And I looked at the, the guy he said wrote, and he said, and the, and the guy said, I wrote it. And I said, okay, see me after class. And I left it at that. When class was over, I got a, a piece of paper out of my thing for detention, because that's what we do for those things. And um, cause, you know, that, that's a form of bullying, and, and you're using inappropriate comments. And, and, and I got that out. And when I did that, the guy went all to pieces. He said, I, I didn't know he was going to do that. And I said, well, you know, th th this is the consequence for your actions. You know, I just don't make up consequences. Or, you know, you can choose your actions, but you can't always choose your consequences. And this is your consequence. And he said, well, I didn't write that. I looked at him. You know, my head's going 100 miles an hour. And I'm like, what? He didn't write it? And I said, earlier, I got this. And I said, who wrote this? And you said you wrote it. I said, you're telling me right now that you did not write this. And he said, yeah. And I said, but you told me earlier you did. I said, so when I asked you earlier, you said, you're just saying that you're a one big liar? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm just a big liar. And I said, okay. I said, go on to class, your next class. And I said, we'll handle this later. And we did. And, and we got that settled. And he admitted he, 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 he did write it and all this stuff. But, but that's neither here nor there. The fact is, is that he lied to me straight to my face. And he came back to me and told me that he was lying and he was sorry. But you know what? Every time I look at that individual, you know what comes to my mind? I think they're untruthful. And I've called them another lie since then. But even if they never lied to me again, and even in the future I see them, you know what I'm going to think? They're a deceiver. They tell lies. We've got to be very careful about our reputation and our testimony. Everybody's always looking at us. And we may not think it's a big lie. We may, may don't think it's a big deal or a big deception. I don't know what it may be. But you know what? Once you're labeled a liar or labeled something, that may stick with you. You know, that boy can regain my trust and earn it back. But I'm never going to forget that story. You know, I'm not going to hold it against him or anything. But, you know, that's just always in my head. And, you know, us as humans, that, 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 that's the way things work. And so we got to be very careful about not being a deceiver, not being a liar. Does other people look at you and say, oh, hey, he's just a big liar? Because there's plenty of people I know that, are, that claim to be Christians. And, and some of them, I believe, they are saved. But they're not they're known as some of the biggest liars in the world. I mean, they just tell lies all the time. They just can't help themselves. And and I don't want to be known like that. I you know, in my business, I try to treat everybody the same and I am upfront and honest with everybody. Okay? And that's one thing that I'm always never want to be accused of is telling lies or trying to deceive somebody or trick somebody or anything like that. I'm always trying to be straightforward. I'd rather lose money than be a liar, okay? And be known as a liar. And and so I, I want you to think about those things, Joshua. Those guys worked up this big deception. Number one, are you working up some kind of deception where uh, people think you're saved and you're really not? Second of all, if you are saved, are you known as a deceiver? Are you a liar? Maybe there's some, there's some sin in your, in your life that you deceived everybody else and nobody knows that about you. Or, or there's some kind of secret thing that you have going on that, that's not right and you know it's not right. And you, you're playing along with everybody else and everybody thinks everything's fine. But there's something you need to get right, somebody you need to apologize to, somebody you need to ask forgiveness for. I don't know what it is. But we all, if there's something like that in your, in, in your life, get that settled. And then the last thing, which I mentioned earlier, was that they seek not counsel from the Lord. They didn't ask God. You know, I'm not talking about the clothes you wear, but I'm talking about you, know, you want to switch jobs. You want to talk about where to send your kids to college, or send your kids to school, who your kids marry, or or who I should marry, or or, or some kind of big business deal, or, or something. Seek God's counsel, and let Him show you. And if you don't know what way to turn, wait on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up as wings as eagles, and you know that verse of Scripture. Seek the Lord's counsel. This is another being outdoors words of Matthias. 
This is Joshua chapter 9. If you have any questions about what you've seen or heard, feel free to give us a call at 336-564-2400. You can email us at eric, E-R-I-C, at beanoutdoors.com. Stay tuned next month for another Bean Outdoors Words of Matthias. Thanks for watching.